Hi everyone, it's Mira from Dave FM, and I want you to meet Rob and Lips from Anvil. Hi, I'm Lips. Hey, I'm Rob Reiner. How are you? How's it going? Okay, story of Anvil, fascinating documentary. For those who haven't seen it, people keep calling it, and I'm wondering if you're tired of people saying it's a real spinal life Spinal Tap. tap. <laughs> I know. I mean, what does that mean? Well, it's, it's really nothing like Spinal Tap, but uh, we're we're okay with it. You're cool with it. Well, you have to understand this. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a documentary about a metal band. Well, there's one thing going against you right to begin with. Never mind the fact that our drummer's name is Rob Reiner, although this is <laughs> the real Rob Reiner. <laughs> right. And he's the other Rob yeah, Reiner. And Spinal Tap is the fake anvil. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's back up. Is and, the, we're, and we are very real. Okay, to to understand this, the, you, you can't help but but uh, but but get the comparisons so instead of instead of uh, trying to avoid it we embraced it and it works much as a much like a trojan horse mm-hmm. and uh, before you know it the anvil drops on your head <laughs> emotionally and yeah. it's a much much different different flavor and uh, and and it's real this is this is the bottom line it's it's a, a, a true life true to life story and it, it's as real as it gets. Okay, so in the 80s, you're touring, you're thinking, this is the prime, we're blowing up. Yeah, and then we got involved with a manager who derailed us and wrecked it. <laughs> but that didn't mean we didn't that, stop rocking, recording, and touring for the last 30 years. That's right, and we have a, an amazing under underground following all over the world that has uh, not only followed our band, but financially financially supported us by buying our CDs and merchandise and having us come and play in the different different marketplaces all over the world. So we feel very, very successful. What has happened now is obviously a whirlwind, beautiful, miraculous moment in our lives, and we're becoming above ground, so to speak, and it's a great place to be. Okay, so I was going to say, um, it's almost like be careful what you wish for. The movie's out, the story of Anvil. The reviews are incredible. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a wonderful documentary. So now you're starting to tour, uh, you know, continue this, continue this momentum. And, and we were able to quit our supplementary jobs, and now we are doing 100% Anvil, which is a, also, I mean, all, all the things, I mean, we've wished it and dreamed it and wished it and dreamed it, and it's all coming true, and it's the most wonderful, miraculous thing that you could ever ask for. How did you get the name Lips? <laughs> Can you do that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> what was it like uh, meeting Rick Rubin? We've never met. We've Rick never Rubin. met him. No. You de- so, uh, don't you think you're going to meet him now? We've well, sure. It's not, Why not? It's not another possibility. We've we met, met we, Dustin Hoffman. We met so so many, I mean, anything's somebody, possible. <laughs> met so many other I people. thought I had read that you had met him. Yeah, well, he was headbanging to uh, one of our shows in L.A. So you did not meet him there, but he was no, there. No, we met him there. No, you met him. After Dustin that. Hoffman. Yeah, he yeah. came to see Oh, Dustin Rick. Hoffman. I was thinking Rick Rubin. Sorry, oh, no, I lost no, no, there. No, no, Rick no, Rubin, we haven't had the pleasure of Okay, him. so Dustin Hoffman was at one of your shows. The, yes, yeah. the Egyptian Theater, the premiere in, 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 in opening in L.A., and we did the Anvil Experience. That's when we come out and play after the movie, and... He was really, really blown away. Did you recognize him in the crowd? Yes, uh, I yeah. did. <laughs> it was like, imagine looking out at a crowd and it looked like the Sergeant Pepper's cover. Okay, all famous people. And you're going, well, this isn't cardboard cutouts, man. Holy sh- smokes, man. Look at who's, that is Dustin Hoffman over there. Oh, my God. You know, like you're flipping out. You can't believe who's actually sitting out there. I mean, some of the some of the celebrities that we've met, obviously Keanu Reeves, um, that's a close friend of Sasha's. He's done some great work with Sasha there. Um, uh, the, the, a wrestler guy by the name of Chris Jericho. Okay. Um, uh, p- other people that showed up, John Mayer, um, the guitarist. Um, amazingly, uh, in in cons, we just got back. Uh, yeah, now met, tell us what I that met, was I like. Met, I met Tilda uh, Stinson, who was just hugging me and just was completely. So am- the, it's just amazing. This experience is still pretty surreal for you guys. It's absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's been going for a year and a half already. 
No, so when you were filming the documentary, you know, when all of this was happening, mm -hmm. when you were going on that tour, what did you expect that this it was going to happen this way? Okay, let me let me put this in. when the the day that Sasha sat me down in his uncle's living room and where, where we, I mean, we have a very long history. The the director and, and us, mm -hmm. we met we met Sasha in 1982. He came backstage at at the Marquee Club in London, England, and that's where we first met him. Okay. And uh, we, he became our drum roadie. He was a 15-year-old kid, a really, really imaginative, hilarious kid. We, he, we took him on as our, our pet, uh -huh. <laughs> so to speak. And, uh, and, and corrupted him. Corrupted him very well. <laughs> life, li lifelong experiences for him. Uh -huh. And he kind of disappeared out of our lives and became a screenwriter for Steven Spielberg, nonetheless. Yeah, pretty amazing a gig there. Yeah, we were unaware of it until he until found he, us in Until he found us in 2005. I went down to visit Sasha in LA, and he, I'd given him the 10 albums he'd not realized, and my attitude is still the same. It's extremely positive. I'm, I'm a, very, a, a ridiculous optimist, but that's, that's just my nature. Um, about a week later, he shows up back in Toronto. We go over to his Uncle Marty's and sits me down. He goes, we're going to make a movie. At that moment, I saw my future. I saw the biggest opportunity that has ever happened to me or probably any other musician. A real Hollywood guy is going to make a movie about me. Pretty incredible. Yes. So from my perspective, the optimist, the optimist that I am, I saw this as being probably the greatest and most sensational moment that the world will ever know as far as a rock documentary. Sure. And then it all happens. And now it's all happening. And yes. here you are. Mm -hmm. This is nothing compared to being in France where they're screening the movie and people are cheering and hugging you and getting so excited. And it only gets better from here. What would you do if it got nominated for Best Documentary for an Oscar? I want to play metal on metal oh, on metal yeah. at the at the Oscars. That's what yes. I want to do. <laughs> I had to just to see the look on Jack Nicholson's face if he's out there. <laughs> you know, you'd finally make the Oscars interesting. Yeah, so we <laughs> more down to earth instead of so, so such a um, uh, a stuffed shirt event. 